Roblox. Many people see this as just a kids game, but it's one of the most diverse scenes in gaming with multiple communities being created in it or joining the gaming platform. One of the biggest and fastest growing communities in Roblox with multiple A-list YouTubers being a part of was the Roblox Myths, which in the start of the new decade of the 2000s, the community kind of died. Now this part of the video will have to dedicate a lot of time into explaining the complicated story of the Roblox mid community, so bear with me. In 2014, the Roblox Corporation had been existing for a decade. With that time span, many disturbing yet intriguing events and rumors were being spread around involving users who have a creepy enigmatic vibe and were involved in hacking incidents or just possessing rumored abilities. These users would be named Creepypasta Guys, as the Creepypasta genre was very popular in this time period of the internet. The main method of stories about the Creepypasta Guys being spread around was in the Roblox forums. One of the first myths which were not affiliated by any sort of old history in the platform being talked about and just purely made up in these forums was a user by the name of Smith Colt, a part of the extensive myth story of the Colt family. In the most simplest terms, Roblox myths are folk tale like stories made up by a Roblox player. At least I hope it is made up. One of the earliest people that can be called as a myth hunter or a person that investigates myths is the user by the name Aquajet316 that started documenting Roblox myths in YouTube by 2008. If you could call it an investigation, but it still counts. By the same period, many of these myths are mostly coexisting as hackers, as Roblox game security by this time wasn't the best. One of the biggest myths, the mysterious turned trivialized hacker named 1x1x1x, was rumored to have been involved in the April Fool's 2012 Roblox hacking incident that saw every corner of the platform being manipulated by hackers, would spawn an ongoing trend in a general Roblox community of multiple rumors of alleged hackers planning to hack the site and a specific date which would all just be rumors. Anyway, going back in 2014, a user by the name Evil Thunder Guy one or Kazdem would form one of, if not the biggest myth hunting groups in Roblox, Roblox's myths. Kazdem's group grew in moderate popularity before in 2018, where the group started picking up more pace with the game being made to document many myths as well as the group being seen as an alternative from people leaving another big Roblox myth group, the Robloxian myth hunters, due to in-group corruption. The entire Roblox myth scene would gain a massive attention boost from none other than the YouTuber Flamingo, who is credited as one of the YouTubers that contributed the most in making the myth community a household name in Roblox. Gasdam would start helping myths develop their stories in return for investigation permissions. Another person that can be credited to Gasdam's group growing in popularity was the user named Universities, who was also a part of Robloxian Myth Hunter group before switching to become a high-ranking member of the Roblox Myth group, which we will talk about later. Roblox Myths were in an all-time popularity with many Myth groups and YouTubers fascinating the Roblox community making the Myth community one of the biggest communities in Roblox. There's no way this could ever fail, right? Right? Well, unfortunately, Castum was a pretty terrible guy. Expecting, huh? Roblox? A grown man? With high power? Pfft, no way. He was exposed of grooming three underage girls abusing his girlfriend and defending pedophile. God damn it. You'd think that the group position dynamic would look like a triangle, you know, cast them on the top, everyone on the bottom. Without the people on the bottom, cast them wouldn't be on the top. But it turned out to be an upside down one. After the information being revealed, chaos was the only word to describe the events that had happened. Many people were randomly demoted and promoted by admins abusing their power and the Discord server. One of the main ways where Roblox Mitch members communicated just got deleted. And a f***ing coop was going on with high ranking members trying to take control of the group. Eventually, Kazdam did resign and gave power to a user named Sensei Vinny which just didn't even want to be the owner. So when people saw Vinny as a way for Kazdam to return to power, Vinny threw the hot potato to another user named the Cream of Crab which then did absolutely fucking nothing and then embezzled the entirety of the group's Robux funds and hot potatoed to another user named Exodus which he would decide to restart the group into the Bureau of Myths which in 2023 was taken over by user named Baddy Blood because the Bureau was, well, corrupt again. So Baddy took control and became the new girl in charge. Baddy Blood's leadership would begin with her declaring her the Mid Queen, a mockery to cast them's title of the Mid King, and then repurposed the group as a platform to expose pedophiles and predators in the Mid community, which she decided to expose universities. 
Remember the guy I credited earlier in the video? Yeah, he's a pedophile as well. Universities were also a big myth named Alone Traveler and guess what? He would also be a big pedo in that account as well, grooming people in that account. Afterwards, Kasdem's group would deteriorate further into a shadow of its former self. And due to Kasdem's absence, the popular myth group behind Shade Light had hit a hiatus and would be discontinued. Other popular mid groups like the Cold Family and the Grocery Gang would also be left in hiatus after the dramas in the world of mid sin. Flamingo, being a prominent source of mid attention, would be suspected of deciding to start distancing himself from the mid sin as he had been criticized for his lack of support for the entire cast of situation and one of his own affiliates, universities helping him by sending Flamingo mids to go to and since universities was also exposed as a pedophile, such a close contact, it's clear that Flamingo is trying to distance himself from the sim to avoid another incident with him being involved again. He, he ran one of the largest myth groups and he also uh, owned a lot of the myths apparently that like like the big creepy pastas were kind of co-written or helped develop by him. So a lot of different things kind of fell apart from him being like a, a really just a danger to minors. It was also not a good look since it would raise some doubts over Flamingo's myth hunting capabilities as many would turn to see him as just a promoter of the group which was run by pedophiles. The mid scene was also seen as a very toxic scene as many of the people in the community were just plain psychopaths or toxic individuals and since the community was also made up of young kids that watch youtube videos and want to become hunters or mids which I'm also pretty guilty of, it's just not a good combination of two groups in one community. By the later years of 2020, the mid scene did witness a bit of a revival with many mids rushing to fame and other YouTube is covering them. The blood stains from the whole Kasdem situation alluring over the mid scene. Many people were just turned off or just started avoiding the mid scene altogether and leading to the scene with only hardcore followers actively supporting and consuming the scene. Before I continue the video, I feel that it is important to talk about one last bit of the mid community before we proceed. On February 6th of 2024, a Google document was released revealing that the Roblox mid journalism or the person behind the account tragically took his own life. The person behind the document was a user named Nebula World. The purpose of the document was to document journalism. I know you all have a singular looming question and I'm tasked with being the one that you ask it to. Why? And the short answer is, I don't know. I can't pretend to know. What I do know is that instead of dwelling on why he did it, we should instead focus on a different topic entirely, reflecting his story with our own. His outlook on life was that of the most compassionate person you know. He was genuine, he would totally tell you how it was, doesn't matter if it hurt your feelings, he was generous. He would give up all the time he had to help someone he didn't even know with something that he may or may not have known how to do. And he had the sharpest wit of anyone I think I've ever known. He brightened others days every sense he got, and he was the first to check up on you when you seemed a bit off. It almost feels like I'm doing a bit of injustice to him for not talking about him more. I could go on for quite literally hours. The impact he had on me and many others is profound. Even though this is a very tragic event and it being one of the only cases where a well-known mate passed away, likely his name being remembered more as the mate that died instead of being remembered for his work, journalism is, in a case, was able to show how much turmoil a community has, there will be someone there with you, like a friend, comrade, or a brother to you. Rest in peace, journalism. To shift the topic, Rust010 was a myth that was one of the first myths that Flamingo has documented, making him a household name in his community. Many have, however, debated Rust's title of a myth since he mainly focuses more on creepy horror games instead of an in-game storyline that many other popular myths were doing. Kind of coincidentally, he retired from being a myth after his models were leaked. In 2021, Rust decided to start doing YouTube, which his channel would be influenced by other YouTubers like Swibrin Sims or Serbent Form of Comedy with Random Strangers. It was also revealed in a deleted Q&A that he revealed his age being 19. So he became a hotshot enigmatic Roblox niche celebrity at the age of 14. What the f am I doing with my life? The main point I want to present is Rust's ability of content creation. With his expertise of game coding and also the community he was able to form because of his popularity as a myth, 
Wasp was able to create content that is very engaging, entertaining, and Mr. Beast, Eric, Ryan, Trey, and many other fucking lunatics making content-esque videos. The main point is that a myth can't become a YouTube personality. But Rust wasn't the first to use their myth popularity to create a new career. Gauze, another famous Roblox myth, garnered 100,000 subscribers making Roblox gameplay videos. Another myth turned YouTuber, however currently inactive, is Fiddlepath. One of his unlisted videos is the one example that could theoretically revive the Roblox myth group with Rust. For a myth to garner some attention, they need the intention of a YouTuber to make a video about them. Well, I'ma ask you this, what if myths are the YouTubers giving the story? It's almost been standard practice for a myth's mainstream debut to be getting featured in a famous YouTuber video. But since the two little pillars of the myth scene are gone and the myth community having a reputation for a toxic community known for infighting and drama, and many YouTubers getting wary of the scene due to its controversies, one of the only ways the community could ever be rebuilt as if it was built with a new system. Story-based videos. In the past, many myths used YouTube videos as a way to give a hidden story connected to their games. But what if myths create their own videos detailing a story? However, due to the potential loss of familiar face within the video for audiences to even permit to watch, it's arguable that the popularity that the myth community had would never ever be replicable unless another figure like Flamingo or himself steps up to become a soul case host for these myths. But it's safe to say that myths going independent would have major positive causes that still gives audiences that want a spooky and thrilling story the access to watch a more varied catalog while also myths succeeding and profiting over their creativity. And that is where Rust comes into play. While you could argue that it is counterintuitive of an argument since Rust audiences are mostly Flamingo fans, Rust could be a massive turning point for the mid scene. With its ability to convert audiences into frequent watchers and the obvious drought for any source of story-based myths in the YouTube algorithm, the potential that the mid scene has in content creation is great and I think that Rust could inspire this change. It's just that someone needs to step up and set the scene into a new direction and inspire other myths into doing so.